general public that it complies with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, entitled Senator Byrd and Bear Open Public Meeting Act. New Jersey Casino Control Commission on July 20th, 2022, filed with the Secretary of State at the State House at Trenton a notice of this hearing. On July 20th, 2022, copies were mailed to subscribers. Members of the press will be permitted to take photographs. We ask that this be done in a manner which is not disruptive or distracting to the Commission. The use of cell phones in a public meeting room is prohibited. Any member of the public who wishes to address the commission will be given the opportunity to do so before the commission adjourns for the day. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Morning. I want to welcome everyone who are who are with us in person as well as those listening remotely. For this special meeting, all meeting participants and witnesses are present in the Commission's public meeting room. We are, however, streaming this meeting and will continue to stream all of our public meetings. The public is able to listen through access provided on the Commission's website as well as through our YouTube channel. We will accept public comments via email. Public comments can be sent to public.comments at ccc.nj.gov. I'll repeat that. Public comments can be sent to public.comments at ccc.nj.gov beginning now and any time throughout the meeting, ending at the time of adjournment. This meeting is being transcribed as well as recorded, and minutes will be available on our website in due course. Good morning. Uh, please answer when I call your name for the roll, please. Commissioner Molinak? Present. Vice Chair Cooper? Present. And Chairman Pelosi? Present. The matter on um, our agenda for consideration today is the plenary qualification of OCR Investment LLC as a holding company of casino licensee AC Ocean Walk. It's petition numbers 1762101 and petition number 3082101. Mr. Chairman, with your pleasure, the, the matter can proceed. Thank you. Council, can you enter your names for your appearances on the record, please? Lynn Kaufman, Cooper Levinson for OCR Investment. Lucas Levinson, Cooper Levinson. And Sarah Ben David, Deputy Attorney General on behalf of the New Jersey Division of Gaming Enforcement. Mr. Chairman, I will note that at the uh, ICA proceeding, the Commission did grant the motion for. Uh, AC Ocean Walk to intervene, so I would ask the Council for AC Ocean Walk into their appearance. They need not participate in the proceeding uh, verbally, but to have them enter their appearances on the record for Council's appearance on the record. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Stephen D. Schreier, law firm of Blank Rome, on behalf of AC Ocean Walk LLC and also Luxor Capital Group. At our October 14, 2021 public meeting, we considered and granted the request of an OCR <coughs> investment LLC for interim casino authorization and related rulings to permit, to, to permit it to complete a transaction whereby OCR investment would make a $175 million investment and acquire a significant indirect ownership interest in, in a casino licensee, AC, Walk, AC Ocean Walk LLC, which does, not, does business as Ocean Casino Resort. The interim casino authorization extends for nine months, the nine month period, which the Commission may extend. At our July 7, 2022 public meeting, the Commission extended the interim casino authorization period to permit the matter to be heard today. The Casino Control Act requires that the Commission determine whether OCR investment and related entities 
as well as those individuals designated as qualifiers or key qualifiers have established by clear and convincing evidence that they meet the standards set forth in the Act for plenary qualifications. To guide us in that determination, we will take testimony from witnesses and consider the presentations of counsel. Before we begin, I understand that there are two exhibits, two, two exhibits that have been pre-marked. Mr. Nance. Chair, Commissioners, the pre-marked exhibits are as follow. Uh, the Division of Gaming Enforcement submitted one exhibit pre-marked as D1. D1 is a report of the Division of Gaming Enforcement dated June 24, 2022 on the plenary qualification of OCR Investment, LLC, as a holding company of AC Oceanwalk, LLC. The petition submitted one exhibit pre-marked as P1. P1 is a PowerPoint. Those are the exhibits that were submitted. Thank you. Ms. Kaufman, do you want to be heard on that, on the ceiling? Um, yes. Uh, well, I have nothing. Um, I file papers which uh, stand for themselves, and I respectfully request the commission to grant the ceiling request. Thank you. Division? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd like to move the division's report into evidence at this time. As indicated by Mr. Nance, it's been pre-marked as D1. With respect to sealing, um, counsel for the applicant as well as commission staff have been advised of the division's position. Um, the division is not interposing a formal objection and leaves the sealing matter to the discretion of the commission to decide. Thank you. Commissioners, are there any questions regarding the sealing request? No. No. Hearing none. If there's nothing further, I move exhibits D1 and P1 in the evidence granting petitioner's sealing request with respect to D1. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, I'll make the second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have it. Are there any other procedural matters to be brought to our attention at this time? Hearing none, we'll begin with the opening statements. Uh, yes, thank you. Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, on March 26, 2012, I stood here and asked the Commission to grant a casino license to Rebel Entertainment Group for the casino that is now known as Ocean. While the license was granted, at that hearing, the Division expressed concerns about the optimism of the forecasts. They found them to be a little too optimistic. There is definitely no need to discuss that any further, nor is there a need to discuss the too many proceedings that had to happen that counsel, and I will speak for Mr. Schreier, who was involved in many of those proceedings, um, all counsel involved would rather forget. Instead, um, we're here today to say that the division's report to show, to obviously show you why this um, OCR investment should be plenarily qualified, but instead of the division telling us that our report was overly optimistic and the division report, they expressed that the forecasts were conservative. And I'm very pleased um, to be presenting this today, starting with a conservative forecast. As we said, we represent OCR Investment, which is the indirect 50% owner of Ocean. OCR Investment is owned through trusts by the Illich family. Marion Illich is very pleased with this ownership and that Ocean has been added to her other extensive family holdings, which we spoke about last time and will refresh your recollection of. In order to become an indirect owner of Ocean, OCR investment requested and was granted, as you stated, ICA authorization on October 14th, subject to certain conditions, which we'll discuss later and which uh, we uh, have been lifted, most of them. Those conditions were in place due to the history of Ocean prior to the time of Luxor's ownership. As part of the ICA process, an ICA trust 
was established to hold the indirect interest of ocean during the ICA process, and we appointed and the Commission approved Bill Murtha to manage the ICA Trust at that time. OCR's, OCR Investments purchase of 50% of the equity of Ocean closed on November 24, 2021. On that same day, a management agreement between Ocean and OCRM was entered into for OCRM to become the manager of Ocean. Today, as we said, we are seeking plenary qualification of OCR investment in order to be a casino holding company pursuant to Section 84 and Section 85.1 of the Casino Control Act. Before I go any further, I am pleased to say, I'm very pleased to be here in person, and I'm especially pleased that we have representatives of Ocean also here in person. And if I may introduce them, and I'm going to ask each one of them to stand up as they are certainly you know, part, a good part of the success of the property that you're going to hear about. So um, I will start with Bill Callahan, general manager. Bill is the general manager of the property. Um, next we have Kelly Burke, who is senior vice president of marketing. She's the chief marketing officer of the property. We have Joe Musket, the chief legal officer, senior vice president of the property. And we have Betty Parker, who is our chief compliance officer. Thank you. I'll let you sit. Oh, see, I knew I was going to forget somebody. I always forget somebody. Laura Palazzo. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about how well we're doing financially, and I forgot to introduce the chief financial officer, Betty Parker. Uh, Betty Parker. And I know I said her name wrong again, Laura Palazzo. Can I leave now? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, in order to be granted plenary qualification as a holding company, OCR must prove that it meets the standards for qualification under the Casino Control Act. And there are several elements I'll briefly run by. They must maintain the appropriate financial stability, integrity, and responsibility under the Act. They must possess the, requ the requisite good character, honesty, and integrity. They must have a sufficient level of business ability and casino experience to operate and maintain a successful and efficient casino. And then all the natural person qualifiers must meet the standards of the Act. You have the division's report on the qualifications of OCR investment and its qualifiers, and it is recommending qualification, which brings us to here today. In order to provide more detail and to prove by clear and convincing evidence that we should get plenary qualification, I will be calling two people I did not introduce yet, who you have met on Zoom and you are going to meet by testimony today, and that is Mr. Bruce Dahl and Mr. John Policicchio. So, thank you. Division. Good morning again, Chairman and Commissioners. For the Commission's consideration today is the plenary qualification of OCR Investment LLC, or OCR, as a holding company for AC Ocean Walk LLC, which operates Ocean Casino Resort. OCR must meet the criteria set forth in Section 84 of the Casino Control Act to be found qualified as a casino holding company. Ms. Kaufman stated the standard correctly. First, OCR must demonstrate that it possesses financial stability, integrity, and responsibility. Second, it must show that it has good character, honesty, and integrity. Finally, it must show that it has sufficient business ability and casino experience to establish the likelihood of maintaining a successful and efficient casino operation. And of course, individual qualifiers also must be qualified. These criteria must be proven by clear and convincing evidence, as the chairman indicated in his opening remarks. Originally, OCR was to make an investment of up to $175 million and acquire an indirect interest of up to 50% in AC Ocean. Also, OCRM LLC, an affiliate of OCR, was to become the new casino manager of Ocean Casino Resort. For the investment and the management agreement to proceed, certain steps were necessary. First, the ownership structure of AC Ocean had to be reorganized, which required new entities to be formed and qualified. Those entities included Ocean Casino Resort Holdings, LLC, and new Tenray, LLC. 
They were found qualified on September 15, 2021. Second, to implement the new management arrangement, the management agreement had to be approved and a determination had to be made about the licensure status of OCRM LLC. The management agreement was approved on September 21, 2021, and a determination was made on the same date that OCRM LLC would need to seek a casino service industry enterprise license. Finally, to acquire its equity interest within the new structure, OCR needed to obtain ICA. As indicated by the chairman and Ms. Kaufman, at the conclusion of a two-day hearing on October 14, 2021, ICA was granted to OCR in order for it to consummate the transaction by which it obtained an indirect interest in Ocean Casino Resort. On November 24, 2021, the transaction proceeded at one closing rather than two as originally planned, and the transaction closed on that date. On the same date, Ocean closed on a revised term loan with its lender, JP Morgan. The new loan was used in part to fund a 463 room expansion of Ocean's Hotel, which I'm sure we'll hear more about today. Through the ICA trust arrangement, OCR currently holds a 50% indirect interest in AC Ocean. It is here today seeking plenary qualification, and it may then hold that interest directly rather than through the trust arrangement. The division has completed its investigation of OCR and its affiliates, which must qualify as additional holding companies. The division's investigation included an updated financial analysis of Ocean, including a review of the impact of the transaction the hotel room project, and long-term debt, as well as an analysis of Ocean's financial forecasts. The division's investigation is summarized in a report dated June 24, 2022, which has been entered into evidence as Exhibit D1. Separate reports have been filed regarding six individuals required to qualify, including Marion Illich and her son, Christopher Illich. Today, the commission will hear testimony and arguments of counsel which together with the division's report will allow it to evaluate whether OCR meets the requirements of the act. The division is prepared to proceed with today's hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kaufman, please call your first witness. Uh, yes, um, Bruce Dahl. Yes. I forgot to warn him. Mr. Good morning. Williams, will you swear in no, witness, I, I should. I said I oh, forgot to warn you. There? <laughs> yes. And sit. Please sit. Oh, good. Ms. Dole, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Bruce Dahl. Thank you. Welcome to Atlantic good. City. Or welcome to the Casino Control Commission. Um, could you? Uh, Tell us what your current positions are, both uh, with respect to Ocean and in your other job. Sure. Um, first, actually, I'd like to thank uh, Sarah, the division, and the commission for all their efforts in this process. Thank you. Um, my current position is president of Motor City Casino and president of uh, OCRM, uh, Ocean Casino Right Resorts Management. Um, those are really the two positions I hold. Okay, and do you have a position with OCRH? Yeah, as part of uh, our uh, partnership with Luxor, um, there's a management board. Both John and I are on that four-person management board. Luxor has the two other positions on that board. Okay, thank you. And could you give us um, a little background? How long have you been at Motor City? What, what did you do before that? Uh, I've been doing this for almost 34 years uh, in the gaming industry. I started in 1988 with uh, Caesars Palace as a senior internal auditor. Uh, I spent time in uh, Lake Tahoe, which was pretty nice. Uh, uh, also with uh, uh, the Desert Inn uh, as their uh, controller. Eventually moved to the Hard Rock in Las Vegas uh, from 96 to 99. In 1999, I moved to Detroit to open Greektown Casino. I spent seven and a half years there, left in 2006 to move to Motor City Casino, and I've been there for the last 16 years. It's a good thing I started when I was nine, so I, I look a lot older <laughs> than I am. Um, as we talked about last time, Marion and Michael Illich founded Little Caesars in 1959. 
the first pizzeria and grew it from there and the Illich family still has ownership, full ownership. They also have other significant holdings in the food, sports, and entertainment industries. Could you talk, give some, some highlights about the large investments in that segment? Sure. They, uh, they grew one store into, I think, well over 15,000 uh, Little Caesars outlets across the, the world now. Um, they um, also own the Red Wings and the Detroit Tigers. Uh, they own Blue Line, which is actually a, a supplier to Little Caesars restaurants across the world. Um, they also have Olympia Entertainment, which operates the um, Little Caesars Arena. Uh, Comerica Park, the iconic Fox Theater, and their 50-50 partners in a company called 313 Presents, uh, which books over 300 shows in the various venues that they have across um, the, the Detroit or Southern, southern uh, Michigan market. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Motor City Casino. Okay, thank you. Um, you mentioned your role, after I asked, at the Board of Managers of OCR Holdings. And you did mention that you and John were two of the managers, and then there were two Luxor managers. Can you explain how that works? Is it equal? You know, how does the voting work? Sure. Um, yeah, through their 50% control um, of the uh, uh, OCR holdings, uh, they have two members on the board, uh, Mike Conboy and uh, Norris Neeson sits on that board with uh, John Policicchio and myself. Um, to date, we, we keep them updated on a regular and ongoing basis. We've had two formal board meetings um, since, we, since our uh, uh, initial um, approval, uh, and it's gone very well. Again, they're, um, they appreciate, I think, what we bring to the table from a casino background, um, and uh, they're, they're very happy with their investment and, and what's happened. And you keep in touch with them between meetings? Yeah, absolutely. We have regular con weekly contact with them um, to, to, to keep them up to date. I do believe they actually get daily reports as well of the uh, success of the financial success of the of the company. Okay, so in that capacity, you're an owner representative, but you also have a position on OCRM. So how does that fit together? And then I know you have a very strong executive team that as you know contributed to the success of the property that many of them are here today. How, how does that all work? Sure. Uh, John and I are really a resource for the team. We do have an excellent team led by Bill Callahan. Um, we uh, also monitor the daily, uh, what happens daily on the property. Uh, we listen in on almost all the construction meetings, uh, obviously uh, with building up 463 rooms as we get in as we come in, we're in busy season, we want to finish them and get them occupied. Uh, that's, that's really taken up a lion's share of our time. Um, but we monitor daily what happens. We, we have monthly financial reviews. Um, again, we, we participate in whatever meetings and, and, and really look from a strategic standpoint on where we want to go in the future. Okay, so now switching from your manager role back to the owner role. Um, as you have heard, and as you knew, obviously, before you heard this today, OCR Investment paid $175 million for a 50% indirect interest in Ocean. How has that money been used? So when we closed, uh, and I think Sarah mentioned, we also did the loan uh, with J.P. Morgan at the same time, but the $175 million was really about $100 million was used to repay debt. Um, $54 million went back to Luxor as part of their equity uh, investment in the property. Uh, and then the remainder of it was used for fees and expenses. Okay, so you talked about repaying debt, and Sarah, and you just mentioned the J.P. Morgan loan. So with all of that, how was the debt reduced? Um, yeah, so it, in 2020, the debt was roughly at $225 million. At the end of uh, 2021, uh, it was down to $118 million. So a significant portion got paid off. 
Um, we did borrow uh, basically $185 million uh, from J.P. Morgan at the same time. Ninety of that was used to repay debt as well, or part of the debt process. Um, so there was $90 million uh, of the 118 was directly related to J.P. Morgan. We've started drawing. We also had $95 million available. Seventy of, of it was originally earmarked for the hotel tower rooms. Um, we've now expanded that to $75 million. Uh, and we're also going to use the incremental $25 million, so a total of $95 million for capital projects uh, during this year and the start of next year. And how much um, have you drawn down so far on that of the 70, now 95? So of the 95, we've drawn about $50 million of it down as of June 30th. And so you mentioned, but I want you to confirm because I think it is worth emphasizing that the debt was about $224 million and at, at year end 2020 and at year end 2021, it was 100, about $118 million? Correct. Okay. All right. So a significant decrease in debt. Um, so you, you talked about the hotel rooms, but you're borrowing money and it's expanded. Um, could you talk about some of the more specifically, some of the other projects. I know some of them have been completed that we're going to see pictures of later of um, other projects that that money has gone towards. Uh, sure. I mean, the main one, and actually, John's going to take you on a uh, virtual tour of uh, kind of the whole property so you get a feel, including what the room, the room uh, project that we have underway um, looks like. Um, specifically, we've spent about $5 million to redo what we call the center bar. It's called the gallery bar book and games now. We've added um, a, a gigantic center bar. Um, I think there's approximately 12 or 14 table games in there now, uh, as well as the screens that were left over from the sports book. So um, we took what I would consider a dead space in, in a sports book because sports books generally are empty unless there's games going on. So only at night would you get some people and turn it into really um, uh, one of the best center bars probably in all of Atlantic City. Okay, well, we've obviously touched about capital expenditures and one of the elements to prove financial stability is the ability to make all necessary capital and maintenance expenditures timely, adequate to ensure maintenance of a superior first class facility. Um, a casino licensee is presumed to meet that standard if its capital and maintenance expenditures over a five year period, including the most recent three calendar years and then going forward two calendar years, of at least 5% of their net revenue. Now, it sounds to me that you have met the standard, but I would like to ask you on the record, do you believe that you are meeting that standard and I, can claim that presumption? Certainly, with the 100 million that we're investing this year, um, we're at 10%. I think the, uh, the requirement is 5%. Correct. Um, so we're double that, and with this 100 million going forward, we still anticipate um, probably some restaurant upgrades, so we'll still be spending 25 to 30 million a year. Okay. So, speaking of finances, um, the projections that were used for the ICA, which were from April of 2021, showed projected EBITDA at the end of 2021 of 39.9 million. And in 2021, that ended up being 86.1 million. What do you expect going forward? Can we expect that kind of optimistic? Um, I'd love to tell you we can keep growing at that rate, but that's pretty <laughs> it's hard. It's a little hard. <laughs> it's a little hard. Um, no, again, just per uh, example of the, what the team's been able to accomplish here. Uh, you know, I think on a go forward basis for 2022, as uh, we spent the time and energy on the rooms, um, we'll likely see some improvements maybe in the 90 to 100 million range which already well exceeds the forecast that the division has for the 2022 revenue, correct? Correct. Um, you mentioned at the ICA hearing um, commitment to compliance with regulations. Um, I know it's a top priority for you in Michigan. Um, can you just update us on um, your compliance efforts and you know, hire new hires and sure sure 
Um, yeah, because I keep talking about her instead of Laura, so. <laughs> Um, certainly, uh, I mean, there's clearly no upside in the casino business to not be compliant. Um, our focus certainly in Michigan, and we've had a long-term relationship with the Michigan Gaming Control Board and working with them to make sure that um, we do exactly what we're supposed to do. Um, so far, we've attended all, both the compliance and audit committee meetings that are established for Ocean Casino Resorts in person, because uh, we thought it was that important, and actually I'll be back next week myself to, to uh, attend the next meeting of both the compliance and audit committees. Um, we were lucky enough and had the opportunity and coax Betty Parker to come uh, out of retirement to, to work with us. Uh, I think the division and commission are, are um, familiar with, with Betty. Um, uh, she's working on a full review of all our procedures um, across the, the whole resort to make sure that we uh, are in compliance and we have a, a plan to stay in compliance across, again, the property. And uh, do those compliance efforts and policies and um, include responsible gaming? Of, of course. I mean, um, we're AGA members, uh, American Gaming Association members uh, in Michigan. Uh, we've been able to use that resource at Ocean. Um, certainly, the, um, we're, that's one of the top procedures we're taking a look at and how we can uh, augment, supplement, and improve that process. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, no further questions. Thank you. Division, you're a witness. Thank you. So I'm just going to review some of the, the numbers that we've been throwing around. Um, so <clears throat> has OCR Investment LLC purchased and currently holds through the ICA Trust a 50% ownership interest, indirect interest, in Ocean Casino Resort, right? Correct. Okay. And the amount of the purchase was $175 million, right? Correct. Okay. And the, the purchase closed on November 24th, 2021, right? Correct. And on the same date that the investment closed, we've mentioned that Ocean also closed on a new loan with its lender, J.P. Morgan. Correct. Um, and the amount of that new loan was 185 million, of which 90 million, I believe you said, was borrowed at closing. Correct. Correct. Okay. Which was used to, I believe you said, repay debt. Correct. So as a result of the new loan arrangement, did Ocean's annual debt service decrease? Yes. You um, also mentioned the hotel expansion project, right? Yes. Oh, and that project consists of 463 new rooms, right? Correct. I believe the initial estimate for that project was 70 million, but you just testified that um, current estimate is now 75 million. Is that, do I have that right? That's correct, yes. Okay. And the funding for that project is st still expected to come from draws on the new JP Morgan loan, right? It has. Can you clarify um, what you believe, what, what will be the anticipated impact of that additional room capacity? Um, we, we expect that it could uh, mean as much as 10 million in cash flow on an annual basis. So in terms of, of dates and um, objectives, at the ICA proceeding, I recall you testified that you were hoping to open the new rooms by Memorial Day 2022. Was that target achieved? No. Uh, why not? Supply chain issues, I think we've all heard of the supply chain issues. Um, to, we uh, pivoted and all of, of the uh, millwork came out of Canada. Um, actually, uh, any manufacturers had a hard time. We did have one floor open from, uh, by Memorial Day, um, and we've added about a floor a week. We're, I think, up to seven floors uh, completed. We have five left, hopefully by the end of August, with a floor of a week coming online. Uh, again, it's just been a uh, supply chain and getting deliveries of FF&E. &E. Um, hard, hard to rent a room without a bed in it, so. So you have seven floors completed, you said? Correct. And so how many rooms is that? I see it's a mix. The, we have three floors of suites and nine floors of regular rooms. So um, I know there's one floor of suites complete. Um, I, I don't know, I'd guess, so, well, I mean, 
round numbers, if you, if you cut it in half, it'd be about 230 rooms are on, online. On direct, you talked about um, $25 million in ad additional capital projects. Um, do you want to elaborate on, on what those other improvements would consist of? Some of it was spent this year for updating the casino. We've added the pathways. Um, uh, in, in last year, we finished uh, the uh, upgrades to the, the cove was actually high limit slot areas 2020. Uh, we moved the high limit pit area in 2020, July of 2021. Uh, we also added the, uh, uh, and John's got this in his, uh, in his uh, tour, uh, on the 44th floor, um, there's a private gaming salon that we use as well. That finished uh, last year. But this year, uh, a little more of about five to six million will be for the center bar of the 25 million. And again, um, there'll be some additional purchases um, throughout the rest of the year that will, we, we probably won't use the full 25 million. Um, but as we look at uh, next year in, in updating some of our restaurants, um, we likely may have the ability to draw that down. So I, I feel compelled to ask the financial forecast question. I haven't been, you know, I wasn't the attorney assigned to Revel, not familiar with, uh, personally familiar with all of that history, but um, been assigned to Ocean for quite some time, and, um, and I'm sure you're aware of the financial history of the property. So I'm going to ask, have you re reviewed the forecast that Ocean submitted to the division, right? Yes. Do you believe they're achievable? Yes. Okay. Uh, on direct, you also spoke a bit about the 50-50 um, ownership that property now has um, with, you know, 50% of Ocean being indirectly owned by OCR Investment LLC through the ICA Trust and the other 50% being owned primarily by Luxor Capital Group LP, right? Correct. And as a result of that structure, Ocean's new board of managers, which is situated at the level of Ocean Casino Resort Holdings LLC, um, it, there's two managers appointed by OCR <coughs> Investment um, and two managers appointed by Luxor Capital Group, right? Correct. Okay, and you, you've already testified that the two managers for OCR Investment LLC are you and John Policicchio, right? Correct. So understanding the new board has only met twice, I think you said, um, do you find that you and John work well with the two Luxor managers? Absolutely. I mean, we've uh, obviously through the inf uh, investment process, we spend a lot of time uh, talking with Mike Conboy as well as Norris. So, um, and uh, again, the, the good news is that certainly the um, financial results have ma makes it a lot easier for everyone to be happy. On direct, you also spoke a bit um, about your awareness under the New Jersey Casino Control Act of the standard regarding capital expenditures, correct? Correct. Um, just want to clarify what that current standard is. Um, so if a casino licensee's capital expenditures average at least 5% of net revenues on a rolling five-year basis, they're presumed to meet the first class facility standard. You're aware of that presumption? Yes. Okay. And are you further aware that <coughs> it's the past five years that are looked at, not the past three and the next two? We've had a recent amendment in the law on that point. Uh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I did not properly. I did not properly advise him. I so. just, yeah, I just wanted to clarify. Uh, no, I'm. I thought it was again the two and the th uh, the three and the two. But uh, certainly, even if we look back five years, we will, we'll, and, and at the end of this year, certainly with a hundred million dollar investment, we'll certainly have met that that standard. Okay. So you're aware now, and you'll meet the standard. We will. Okay. Um, let's talk a bit about your, the management arrangement. Um, you testified on direct. You're the president of OCRM, right? Correct. Um, and you, you talked a bit about contact, um, but how often do you personally visit Ocean Casino Resort? Uh, right now we're visiting about once a month. The, the good news with the pandemic and using Teams and Zoom, um, uh, it's pretty easy to jump on a call with anyone uh, here in Atlantic City as necessary. The uh, management agreement provides for the appointment of a general manager, right? Yes. 
And I believe he was already introduced. The current general manager of Ocean is Bill Callahan, correct? That's correct. So when you come to the property, do you, you meet with Bill? Uh, we meet with the whole team. Um, and John's got us set up for about, I think, six meetings over the next uh, two, day and a half. So during the periods of time when you're in Detroit rather than Atlantic City, do you continue to communicate with Bill Callahan about operations at, at Ocean? How often does that you know, contact at a distance occur? Uh, almost daily. So you testified earlier, um, you also serve as president of Motor City Casino Hotel, which is owned by the Illich family, right? Correct. Okay. And at the ICA proceeding, I recall you had testified that you communicate at least weekly with the Illich family about Motor City and that you anticipated communicating frequently with Christopher Illich about the ocean investment. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. Okay, and, and after ICA was granted and the transaction closed, have you, in fact, been in frequent contact with um, or frequent communication with Christopher Illich about Ocean? Yeah, absolutely. We do a monthly what we call business unit review. Uh, and now, as along with Motor City, it includes Ocean. That's on a monthly basis. And then I have a weekly update call with Chris where anything that um, uh, has come up related to Ocean, we, we talk about. I have um, nothing further. Ms. Kaufman, any redirect? Uh, no, sir. Nothing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Can you call your next witness, please? Uh, yes, John Policicchio, please. Raise your right hand, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. I do. Please state your name for the record. John Policicchio. Thank you. Right, John, could you tell us your current positions? Sure. Uh, I am the Vice President, Secretary and Treasurer of OCRI and OCRM. I'm one of the board members at OCRH, and I am the General Manager of Motor City Casino Hotel in Detroit. Okay, and could you give us a little of your background before you became the general manager? Sure. Um, I think we did this last time. We want to go back to yes. like birth, right? Well, so, no, it, it can be it can be briefer. <laughs> no, it's, no, okay. It can be a little bit briefer. That's okay. So, um, in the casino, I started at Motor City Casino in 2010. I've been there throughout my casino career. Uh, I started in the marketing department, uh, kind of digital marketing, but really just kind of rose up through the ranks in marketing, uh, player development, CRM and then uh, took on more and more business development roles on my way to becoming general manager. Okay, um, I think now, while everybody remembers what Bruce said before we get too much into other things, I think it'd be a great time to show everyone the PowerPoint, if we may. Oh yeah, do I have a... I was gonna say, do we have... Something. Okay. okay. Sure. I think, okay, cool. I mean, rather than kind of spending a whole bunch of time on each slide, I think kind of the overall theme of this uh, deck is obviously anybody who doesn't know the facility, it's obviously, uh, it's pretty spectacular to begin with. But I think what is I, we don't want necessarily to get lost, and obviously Bruce talked through a lot of the numbers, is that we're gonna continue to invest in it. Uh, the team on the ground is very good at knowing what uh, types of customers we want to attract and what type of facility you need for that. Uh, so it's kind of like a never, we're never done type of situation. We continue to, we, we plan to continue investing. Um, if you just kind of, you can just kind of flip through them slowly. Um, this, obviously it's a six million square foot facility. 
the Atlantic City Boardwalk is beautiful. The building's beautiful. Um, right now, obviously, in the middle of peak season, we I got to see it a couple of times over the past few years at this point, but it's really um, starting to really come together in terms of what we were thinking a couple of years ago. Even just the pathways in the casino, which you see right now, those were added to just add a little bit better kind of flow. So we, we thought of everything um, in terms of everything from where people go and what they're going to. Uh, if you keep flipping through, obviously, Bruce talked about the Cove. That's the high limit uh, slot product. There's the high limit <coughs> room on the next slide. Uh, there's the loft in, at the top of the hotel tower, which is for kind of the ultra VIP customer. Uh, very, very nice product. The rooms from the beginning were um, beautiful. Obviously, they were um, arguably a little overbuilt, but it's basically a very um, striking world-class facility, and w we knew we needed to finish out the rest of the rooms because we were kind of under-roomed. We decided that was, you know, so that was a big focus of the investment going into it was to make sure we had enough hotel products. So we were going to add 460-some rooms um, because of kind of the views and there's going to be the business for it. This is the presidential suite bedroom. Just kind of keep flipping through the hotel. This is just a rendering. Uh, if you go back just one, that was a rendering of uh, just kind of a basic rendering of one of the new rooms. Uh, I encourage everyone to go visit the property at some point, but um, these are coming online. Uh, Bruce is talking about the supply chain issues. We're seeing it everywhere. Same thing in Detroit. We're working on a couple of big projects. Uh, what the team was actually able to accomplish in terms of what they got online <laughs> by the beginning of July was actually very, very impressive uh, based on those issues, basically international issues all over the place. It's kind of crazy, but uh, there'll be obviously new photos and all that kind of thing done once, once we're able to. You can keep flipping through. And for anybody who doesn't know, the, the pool facility, the indoor-outdoor pool, the cabanas, we did have a, um, I don't want to steal Lynn's thunder on one of the questions, but we did have a VIP come visit the property, and the feedback was just a laundry list of um, very positive comments. It was very cool. They spent a lot of time at the cabana. And keep going. Yep, keep going. The spa, for anybody who hasn't been in the spa, just some pictures of the spa. Um, we did send our customer in there. We got some really, really tremendous feedback about that. But just the overall experience is definitely a place you, um, it's, it's a de definitely a feather in the cap, I would say, of Atlantic City, but just the gaming industry in general. And obviously, in our corporation, we're very proud of the facility. Just it kind of speaks for itself. These pictures are pretty striking. Amada, the F food and beverage product. Bruce talked about it. the next couple of years, we'll probably see an evolution of the food and beverage product because it's kind of one of those we're never done things and you know the customers we do want to attract what do they expect in terms of food and beverage is a very big piece of it uh, this is a VIP lounge used to be the old uh, high limit tables and keep going it's another one for the VIPs upstairs using th this was brand new you wouldn't have thought we needed something like that but absolutely we needed it it was the absolute right call from the team on the ground keep going Nola's this is just one of the bar offerings. In addition to this, we were still under barred, which is the evolution of the center bar. We very much needed a place. First of all, it was obviously the best real estate in the building, but we very much needed a place for people to you know, get drinks, listen to music, have some fun. Um, just as we bring on, once you bring on 460 more rooms, you're obviously gonna have an average of 900 plus more people on property and you gotta feed them and give them a place to go. And uh, that's, that's what kind of the spirit of the last you know, couple of years has been. And then this is actually a rendering of the uh, what we call the gallery bar booking games. It's the old William Hill sports book. Uh, the, it's, it, for anybody who hasn't seen it, it is, is really nice. We were there last night. We finally got to see it finished in person. We obviously visited a few times during the construction, but to see it come alive was very cool. So we went and checked it out last night. There's, a, there's an area upstairs, um, the balcony bar, that can basically be used as a banquet space or just a kind of a VIP space for the actual center bar. But um, I would... I mean, with pride, I would say it's the nicest center bar in the city for sure, but it's, it's up there with the nicest center bars um, in our industry. Obviously, Ovation Hall, we'll talk a little bit about entertainment. It's been a big focus. There's been a lot of concerts, even, you know, kind of like the likes of Hard Rock, putting on very big shows, drawing people down to North Beach, Atlantic City. It's been uh, it's a very interesting summer for that. Uh, I think the next few shots are of the day club or the beach club or the night club. Um, we've had some pretty big acts lately <laughs> that have drawn um, all sorts, uh, a, a lot of people, all sorts of crowds. This is the park. You can kind of see it as you're walking through to the, to the hotel check-in. This was done 
um, right outside there. It's really nice. Obviously, the ocean kind of speaks for itself in terms of it's part of your experience no matter where you are. It's the park at night. I think there's and then the, the nightclub and day club. Um, this is kind of an interesting kind of where it's been and where it is now. I mean, just the, the, the number of people that go through there and the excitement and the energy and even just you know, the posts online and social media and all the stuff that we're seeing and the things that we're hearing anecdotally, completely separate of being a part of the business arrangement of this place, we're starting to hear about it more and more, which is, has been the goal since the beginning. I think that's it. Thank you. Um, we saw the center of our sports book, um, and Bruce mentioned it generally, but when did that open? Uh, first week of July, July 1st. Okay, so fortunately. It was, that was, everything was, all roads were leading to July because of what happens in the city in July uh, and all the people. Actually, and, and we wanted to be ready and, and, they, and they, the team pulled it off. I, it was, that was, that was definitely a big challenge. And. Even looking past July, we know the NFL season strikes in August. And how important is, is that and the fact that you've gotten the sports book open? Yeah, sports book, making sure the sports book is operational for football season is basically the most, it's the most important season to any sports book in the U.S. at least. Um, so it was, it was good to get online. And then obviously work through some of the kinks in terms of the sports book operation leading into August and September, and then you're ready for NFL and college football. Okay. Um, at the ICA hearing, you testified that you thought that the ocean marketing team was you know, in the right direction, that you know, maybe with your marketing background, you know, when you got into the property, there would be some tweaks, but they were very happy in the direction it was going. <coughs> um, now that you've been in the property for a few months, could you, are you sticking by what you thought before you came in? Um, have you, you know, I imagine you're offering guidance, but I was kind of want to see you know, what have you seen? Did it pan out? Yeah, so I would say I'm I'm definitely sticking to that. The marketing team's led by Kelly Burke, who's obviously very experienced in that world. Um, she's been doing an awesome job. The whole team has. So the I don't know if you if anyone's seen the new campaign, but even just the TV commercials and the brand in general. So from the brand perspective, it's we're reaching out to customers that we should have been reaching out to. Um, in a way that we should, you know, with a message and with a look that I think is just absolutely the right direction for Ocean. So I think it's been doing really, really well. I think she's doing a great job. So yeah, I'm very proud of where they are with that. Okay, and you also have touched on the strength of the player development team. Um, how, how has that been developing? Or, you know, what have you seen with that since you've gotten into the property? Very similar. I mean, uh, leadership at the top, obviously, Bill Callahan's background is player development. So that was naturally going to be, um, that was going to have some very good support at the top. And from what I've seen in terms of just, you know, either numbers or kind of how it's panned out, they're doing a very, very good job in player development. There's, there's obviously opportunities there, but they've been doing a really okay. good job. I mean, I, I know I'm asking you if you have done all these things and, you know, if you know, how much you've looked into all these operations, and you know, I think everyone is very aware that this property was closed at the end of November, and you've gotten the rooms, a lot of the rooms up, the rest are coming, and the sports book up. So we do realize you've also been a little busy. Yeah. So um, you did mention that you did not, you weren't not looking into combining loyalty programs between you know, Motor City and Ocean. Have you again? Have you changed your mind on that? On that, do you? you know, how how do you view that now that you've seen the property? I think that's similar. We, I don't I don't see a huge opportunity in combining the loyalty programs. Therefore, it's never going to be at the top of a list of initiatives. It just doesn't. If it made sense, if it does make sense, if it ends up making sense, we'll do it. It's just something like that is a very large undertaking and it's very disruptive and you. The, the cost benefit analysis needs to make sense. And it just didn't at the time. I don't think it does now. And like you said, everybody's really, the goal has been to open the rooms, get the center bar developed, get a few of the food and beverage outlets ready for the increased traffic. And, you know, even without those things, I don't think it made sense. I, okay, well, combining the loyalty programs is one thing, but the other item, another item that was discussed was, you know, your, your, customer base, your Motor City players, and maybe, you know, high, 
<coughs> higher end players, um, you know, were you considering market, marketing, marketing to them and bringing them out to Atlantic City? Yeah, so I think, we, I, think I talked about this at the ICA. I wanna yes. make sure I don't contradict myself, but at the time, what it feels like is it's such a beautiful place and, and offers so much as a destination that at the high end in Detroit, you know, the VIP players, it's, I think, I believe there's an opportunity to expose them to Atlantic City and to Ocean and, and to bring them out here, and we've begun that. So we did have our first VIP player come out, um, and it was a very successful trip, very, very good feedback. And we do have preliminarily right now, we have a trip scheduled for fall or uh, uh, winter of this year to bring a bigger group of the VIP. So the goal is kind of, I, I believe there's a big opportunity in terms of, you know, a select few folks would, you know, have a much better time here. That, that kind of stuff makes sense. And yes, we, we have been working toward that. Because, you know, we do like people to come here yeah. off season as well. Yep. Okay. Um, you also spoke about um, live entertainment and the, you know, bringing some of the, hopefully you know, starting to plan to bring some of the excitement of what you have at Motor City and, you know, make use of the contacts, relationships, and you know, ownership interests you, that the Illich family has and bringing them to Atlantic City. Now, I certainly know that you can't just snap your fingers and you know, get entertainers booked, they're booked far in advance, but have you started the plans for that? Yeah, so we have started that as well. So Olympia Entertainment, which is the booking agent under the Illich Company umbrella, they have, it took, it took quite a few months, um, but they have, they're officially registered. And those meetings are now beginning in terms of, you know, how do we leverage the, either the buying power or the reach or the agency contacts and relationships to bring people here. But yeah, we, the first step was to get OEI registered and we, we got that done a few weeks ago now. So all okay. those meetings have also started. So okay, great. That should be pretty exciting. Okay. Um, another item that we discussed was the proprietary intellectual property that Motor City had developed for their customers, you know, just, you know, kind of an all-in-one customer app. And under the management agreement, Ocean can license that. Obviously, every property is different and things need to be um, to be effective, need to be personalized towards that property. And again, you don't haven't had much time, but um, are, have you been looking into technology or you know other ways to maximize not only necessarily from you know, intellectual property or technology, but also based on you know your experiences and you know your knowledge of vendors, software vendors, and the like. Right, so those meetings have also taken place, lots of them. Uh, we have not deployed any of our technology out here. The, uh, the, everyone would kind of know about that in this room. Um, but in terms of strategy discussion, how we approach things there and kind of the systems that are in place here, uh, yes, those, th th that kind of, I don't want to call it synergies yet because we're not quite there, but those discussions have taken place. They've also been a little busy here. The IT department had headed up by John Forelli, who's very, very strong. Um, they just did a big, hotel upgrade, hotel system upgrade, which in this town where you have such big hotel uh, buildings, there it, it's kind of the lifeblood of the, the back end systems, the hotel system. So they also have things going on. But yeah, there's, there's all sorts of communications going on in terms of strategy and you know, how do you guys think about this and look at this. And so th those are progressing, yeah. Okay, um, switching to over to online and you know, sports and online gaming. I know that when you were here last, you, know, you had just started with your <coughs> land-based in Motor <coughs> City, that then the casino had to shut, and you were more of a newbie in terms, uh, and, and then online, um, obviously time has passed, and I know that Ocean doesn't operate their skins, but it is an important market segment, so combining your new knowledge of online gaming and online sports and your marketing experience, um, what kind of opportunities you know, have you identified and you know, have you started, has, has that marketing effort started? Uh, yeah, and Ocean does have, they do operate one casino okay. skin. But the, uh, basically the biggest move there was, uh, we now have somebody heading that 
area with a little bit more experience uh, in that world. And yes, there's a big opportunity there. It's very early and there's not really anything to kind of speak to. We have in Detroit, where our partnership is with FanDuel, it's a completely different setup. Here it's five casino skins and three sports skins. There it's just one skin per vertical. So casino sports and, um, and uh, we're out there we are number, we're number one in sports and number two in casino, but everybody just has the one. And we have FanDuel as a partnership. It's a completely different setup here. There's definitely an opportunity. It's early on. I think we made the right moves from a personnel standpoint to, to put ourselves in a position to, to grow. Right, and, and of course, and going back to making improvements in the property and, and the rooms, I know that that's all tied to you know, getting certain things done, you know, fuels the marketing effort and fuels more money into the property and Definitely, yeah. be able to keep doing it. So, um, and do you have any, anything you want to close with? Anything I... No, I, I, mean, I, I like to thank everyone in this room. I know this has been, it's been going on for, it, it feels like quite some time now. So um, thank you for all your efforts and I'm happy to answer any questions. Obviously. I think Sarah will have a few for you. Okay. I do have a few. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so to review, you are the Vice President, Secretary and Treasurer of OCRM, which is the new Casino Manager of Ocean, right? Correct. Okay. Uh, I believe Bruce had testified earlier that he visits the property once a month. Is, is that the same for you? How often do you personally visit Ocean? Yes, we, we tend to visit together. Um, like for example, he'll be out next week without me and I came out once without him, but typically it's both of us. Okay. And a similar question that I asked Bruce as well. So are you in frequent contact then with the general manager, Bill Callahan? Yes. And you've testified that outside your ocean responsibilities, you're also the general manager of Motor City, right? Correct. Okay. Um, during the ICA proceeding, and, and again, just now today, um, you testified about the, the management agreement, and through that agreement, you may grant ocean a license and right to use some of the intellectual property you've developed at Motor City, including the mobile app. Do you recall that testimony? Yep, I do. Okay. And then um, during your direct, I, I believe you said um, you've had meetings about deploying the mobile app, but it's, it's not, not in place at this time, correct? Yeah, not even that specifically. The meetings were just about kind of the infrastructure and oh. the IT and, you know, what, how, how does that look? How does the app look here? How does that whole system evolve? It's, we're, not, we're not there yet. We wouldn't, be, we wouldn't be ready to deploy anything like that. Uh, to the extent you can reveal it, is there any other intellectual property that you're considering at Ocean? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, like, like Ms. Kaufman, I, I too recall your positive view of the player development and marketing team at Ocean. Um, during the ICA proceeding, you had testified that you'd like to see Ocean continue to pursue customers, particular, particularly high-value customers, in the outer markets of New York City and Philadelphia. Do you recall that testimony? I do. So has Ocean pursued those markets then, and what have been the results? Yes, they have, and the results have been positive. Do you want to elaborate? <laughs> I mean, kind of, right? Because it's in terms of, um, you know, saying too much. but. The, the campaigns have stretched to those outer markets. The, the, the investment in the property is tailored to attract higher worth customers. I mean, you can see the pictures. Like, you don't, you know, we, we wouldn't put, you know, five, six million dollars into a center bar or $75 million into the rooms that look like that without trying to get that higher worth customer. So slowly but surely, that, that has been definitely working. And you can kind of you can see it in the overall performance, but to kind of drill down is into the into the small you know into the the granular parts of the database is you know not something I would do right now unless you wanted me to. No thanks. Um, during the ICA proceeding, you had testified about cross marketing opportunities between Ocean 
and Motor City, and you testified today that, in fact, you've, you've brought one um, VIP player um, from Detroit <coughs> to Ocean. Um, so it's just the one so far? Yep. Um, during your direct testimony today, you, you mentioned perhaps some further developments with respect to iGaming. Did, do I have that right? Yeah, online, yeah. Okay. So are, are you aware then that um, the Division of Gaming Enforcement has various requirements with respect to Internet platform providers and licenses, registrations that need to be evaluated and obtained? Oh, definitely, yeah. And will you comply with that process? Yes. In terms of marketing and customer experience, um, <clears throat> you, you spoke on direct a bit about um, you know plans to bring entertainers um, to to Ocean um, during the ICA proceeding. I recall you emphasized the fact that you know both properties that you're involved with have have venues available. Have you, at this time, realized any, any benefits or advantages to having the venues in both properties, Motor City and Ocean? Not yet. That's kind of, that's what we're working on. So step one was getting Olympia Entertainment registered, which has happened, and now the, the next steps are discussing all of that. It's, it's really about the, our buying power, and even though it's in Michigan, it's, it's quite large. There's a lot of venues there, so it helps us, you know, maybe attract or even talk to agents or attract other, um, you know, acts that might not come, that kind of thing. So we'll see. I'm, I'm hoping for progress there. Uh, in addition to serving as the vice president, secretary, and treasurer of OCRM LLC, you, um, like Bruce, serve on Ocean's new board of managers, right? Correct. So, and do you agree with his comments that um, that? you and, and Bruce work well with the two Luxor managers? I do agree with them, yes. I, I have nothing further. Thank you. Ms. Kaufman, any redirect? Uh, no. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Alicino? First, thank you for being here today. Um, Mr. Dahl, as well as yourself, uh, we've heard a lot, we've heard about the rooms, different numbers, et cetera, et cetera, and what's going on and the delay, understanding that. If you would, though, um, could you elaborate on what the rooms will look like? And I know it's now, it's 10 years since the original revel. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at new rooms. You mentioned I believe you mentioned a, um, you've got suites, new suites. You mentioned a business floor. Did you mention a business floor? Mm -hmm. was that, there was another word. Okay. Oh, the loft was, it's the, is that one? Yes. It, that, that's a, basically a, a gaming area on the 44th floor of the hotel tower. Okay, that's, forgive me. So what, if you would elaborate on what we can expect to see. You, and again, I understand things are you know, delayed, sure. but, um, what can we expect to see? What's going to separate your property from the other properties? I don't mean that with any disrespect, but what's going to make Ocean so very special with the new with the new rooms, the amenities, and what you're going to be offering to people coming to Atlantic City, as well as letting others know about, even your, your clientele in um, Michigan, so to speak, what's going to say, oh, well, wow, you've got to see Atlantic City. So please elaborate if you sure. would. So uh, at, before we started the room construction, there was a 1,399 rooms, which is, which is quite a bit of rooms, but when you look in the context of the market and what the, our facility can handle, it's actually not enough. We're under-roomed. Uh, obviously, the 12 floors that were basically canceled when Rebel went bankrupt, you know, they were empty, so they, obviously there was always a plan to get over 1,800 rooms in there. But when we were looking at it from the beginning, we said, do we actually need the extra rooms because there's no point in deploying $75 million in capital if there's not a demand for that product. 
But as you look at the facility and everything that we're building and everything the team's been working on in terms of the center bar and the restaurants, we can absolutely handle, we, we believe, we can absolutely handle another 463 rooms worth of people. Now, when I talk about the marketing strategy and the facility, and there is a rendering in there, it's just, it's a photo. It's not, it's not a real photo yet of the rooms, but there is going to be a lot of kind of just regular rooms, king rooms, things like that. But then there's, there's gonna be more suites, which is, even if it's just the adjoining room and kind of the living area, and that's because we were under suited. So we actually kind of reevaluated how many suites we needed out of the 12 floors and increased them in the beginning. So we'd rather have fewer rooms and more suites because we're going for that you know, higher end customer who kind of demands that, that type of product. So everything in the last couple of years and everything in the next couple of years is gonna be essentially converge on the idea of bringing in you know, outer market, higher quality customers you know, who, who are more discerning in terms of they want certain brands when they look at their restaurants and they want certain types of amenities when they look at the hotel. So, I mean, to, to kind of come to Ocean and the, the north end of the boardwalk for a few days, it's, it's, it's a pretty, I mean, that's like a world-class experience. It's not just something for, like when we sent somebody from Detroit, it was just, um, the first statement was, when can I go back? So I think it kind of, the, the facility speaks for itself once we get people here and obviously marketing and brand's job is to get that word out which is what we're doing. So the rooms just really are just kind of, a, they just represent that whole strategy in terms of getting more people down here. Okay, and again, I've heard different dates. A total completion of this project, what are we looking at? Uh, end of August or middle of September. Okay, yeah. okay. And again, not holding it exactly yeah, to it because there are a lot like, of Like Bruce said, I mean, a it, lot of you could have the whole floor done and then if you can't get door locks, you can't open one room. So it's. It's just the reality of our business right now. It's not really just our business. Just if you're building anything right now, you're going right to see now, you're, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're waiting for something. Yeah, okay. Um, another question. And again, I would just, I'm going to say, I would uh, like you to elaborate. Again, I've heard from Mr. Dahl as well as yourself. And um, I always, I always um, say this. I was in the entertainment business. The entertainment for, when I remember this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, for 30 plus years. I'll say 30 plus yeah. years. So entertainment is always... I'm going to say it's important to me. Of course, it's important to the industry, but I'm yeah. always concerned and that extra, like, what's going on. Um, you did mention, uh, okay, Olympia Entertainment. You've got 313. Um, I've read the reports. You've got a magnificent, the Ovation Hall, et cetera. And the deal was just signed, you said, for, oh, for the Olympia. Yeah. Are you able to share with us, so to speak, some of the acts once everything is firm? And I know you... Talk to the manager, talk to this woman. Can you share maybe some of the big names or some of the like wow entertainers or yeah. things that we can expect to see? I should have a better list for you because I knew you were going to ask me <laughs> this. And I can't, it's, on the one hand, I can't really show our hand too much. Okay. On the other hand, I don't necessarily know yet. It really it comes down to what can, what can the facility and the business kind of handle. In terms of the names, I mean, if, if you even just look at the 313 Presents or the, the Detroit calendars, we basically have everybody. Like anybody who tours in the United States comes through Detroit now because of that group, because of our entertainment group. It, it really is, I mean, the, in the list, and I'm not saying this is happening at Ocean at all, but, you know, Elton John was <laughs> just there, Red Hot Chili Peppers were coming, Green Day's coming. Like, there's just, there isn't, there isn't somebody who tours who won't cross through Detroit now because of that group. Now, Atlantic City doesn't necessarily have that issue because Borgata and Hard Rock, and there's, there's big buyers in this market, but Ocean, Theoretically, or even Motor City, if we were on our own island, we'd be at a disadvantage because we're competing with kind of the Live Nation and, and the, the big venues that monopolize. You know, MGM can, can book entertainment across the entire country, so it's hard to compete with that ticket. But we make it a little bit easier to compete with that. So attracting people when Olympia calls is theoretically a little bit easier. So I'm hoping as, I'm hoping as that develops. I will send you personally a list <laughs> once, once we start. Let's what the, the lineup. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A moment ago, you mentioned um, we were, we've heard about cross marketing, um, and I am just elaborate, if, uh, explain a little bit more. It almost I almost got a feeling that there was a little bit of a negative to what to the cross marketing with your clientele in Detroit and Atlantic City. Share with me your thoughts. Just is it are you going to be including some 
is there going to be more cross marketing, more interaction? Between? Oh yeah, no, it shouldn't be negative at all. I, I, I got didn't... that. Well, not exactly negative, but I just wasn't sure. What can we expect? So if... at the kind of the crawl, walk, run in that strategy to make sure it makes sense is, I believe the facility here is at the um, very, very worthy of our VIP customers. So the first part of the strategy is the player development teams working together to bring VIPs from Detroit here which we did once already and we're planning a bigger trip at the end of the year. Like, and when I say bigger, it's, you know, it'll be 30 to 50 people. And that level of customer makes perfect sense because the facility is gorgeous and it's, it's a great few days um, out of town kind of thing. Uh, when I talk about things that don't make sense, it's to like, you know, if you had a player's card and you put it in at Ocean and you're earning comp and points and everything and you pull it out and you go to Detroit and you put it in like, those aren't going to be the same system because to make that happen, it's a tremendous amount of work. And I don't think that pearl is worth the dive quite yet because okay. there's not a ton of people flying from Detroit to Atlantic City all the time. <clears throat> okay. Now, now, I just, that, that's the only reason. Yeah. Okay. It's just not practical. And I didn't mean to actually say ne not negative, but I just wasn't sure of the um, explanation, so to speak, between Atlantic City and Detroit. Um, I don't know if this is for you or Mr. Daub, but let me pose it to you. Um, aside from the casino and everything connected with the casino, what involvement can we see from Ocean with regard to Atlantic City and the community? Sure. So actually we talked to, um, I believe her name is Lisa, who heads up Ocean Cares at Ocean. It's actually very similar to what we have. In Detroit, we call it Helping Hands and all the kind of the community service initiatives for our property roll up through that. It's similar with Ocean Cares, but kind of the overarching um, message is that it's, it's more of a community focus. So if you're going to deploy resources, it's things like cleaning the beach or, um, you know, if there was a, a, there was a bunch of examples she gave me this morning, but basically they're all kind of focused in this area for the most part. Um, but it's everything from boys and girls clubs to, um, you know, kind of like doing things out in the community around here. But it's literally, if you go to the Ocean Cares website, there's just all the local, they're all local charities and that's that's what Ocean supports. Okay. And um, again, this one in your, I don't mean to say in your own words, but um, you've been with the company for, I think you said about 10 years, correct? Yeah, Motor City, I started 2010, so 12 years now. Okay. With regard to Atlantic City, I know we don't have a magic wall in front of you, but, <laughs> And again, I know it's been uh, very fragile and uncertain in recent years because of COVID, but putting COVID aside, if you would, where do you personally see Ocean um, Ocean in the next three to five years? Ooh. Um, in terms of Atlantic City, I think we're, I mean, we're in the top three right now. Okay. And I suspect we will stay there. And um, the goal is to move up. So, and I think we have the facility for it. I think we have the team for it. Uh, and that's, that's kind of the goal. We, you know, we should be a, you know, a one or a two probably in this market. Okay. Um, and I'll just finish. And this actually goes with that question where, when I said, where do you see it in the next three to five, five years? What differentiates your property from the others? So two main things, one of them is kind of the, a little bit cheesier, but it's true. It's the, the team. So the, so what, what Bill and Kelly and, and everybody kind of is there now, the, the, cause I, I kind of saw it, I saw it starting in 19 and to now and kind of just the culture in terms of the, the staff is, has gone in a tremendously positive direction. And I think that automatically translates to better customer interactions and customer service. It's kind of the like, it's, it's that intangible positive thing. When people are happy at their work, you just, you, you just end up getting better customer service. And I think that's awesome. And I, I see that continuing. Um, but the one thing that really nobody has on us, I, mean, I can say it on the record, is the facility. It's just you can't, like walking through that place is, it's hard to not be completely in awe of it everywhere you go. And there's, I've been in every single property in Atlantic City and there's a lot of nice properties here, but I think we have absolutely the best facility. And that's really, really hard to compete with. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you. Mr. Mallon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I kind of felt the same way that the uh, commissioner did concerning the, um, it, it seemed like it was something there about 
Oh man, I messed up big time. <laughs> it on, it came off kind of negative. So it, right? it's always a it did come off kind of negative. I think it was my lawyer's fault. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you cleared that up. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off with, um, I, I went to Detroit. I've been to Detroit, uh, and I, I saw the casino. Cool. Um, when was that? It's been, it's probably been about uh, eight years. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the smoke was filled. It was a smoked filled room. I mean, I couldn't hardly breathe there. Um, we don't have that here, and we didn't have it here then. So um, how will you, how will the uh, smoking ban, if any, affect your decision planning? In Detroit? No. Or here? In Atlantic City. Well, I, well it, in terms of smoking, it basically comes down to, it's, it's funny, the one thing you said in terms of smelling it, it's some facilities are at an advantage and some are at a disadvantage. I would, I would put ocean at an advantage of that in terms of just, it's just newer, taller ceilings, ventilation's a lot easier to pull off. So that might be, that's a huge advantage in terms of if we, if there is a ban or we are allowed to put a smoking area in and the team thinks that the customers want a smoking area, then we'll put in a smoking area. If we have to, if it's completely banned from the floor and then we'll ban it from the floor. It's, it really comes down to what the regulations say and what the customers want. So it, right now in Detroit, we, we're, we're not smoking for right now. Um, oh, good. So, but if, you know, if we were to turn it back on, there's all sorts of different ways to do it. You can do it in like an isolated area or you could, you know, um, you could do a whole floor, that kind of stuff. So it really depends on your facility. I think there, like you said, I think there's a big advantage in terms of ocean, just the facility itself can handle it a lot better. Yeah, I, did, I, have, I have visited um, the ocean, I think it was last month. Uh, I was there to get the tour around the whole building. Cool. Yeah. What'd you think? Well, I always thought the building was a piece of art anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it really is. Yeah. It is. It really is. Um, and um, I was kind of impressed on what you're going to get done. Um, but you're saying none of, there's a lot of rooms that haven't finished yet. We're getting there. That you wanted them to be there, and I can understand that yeah. because of what's going on in the country itself about materials and everything yeah. being not being shipped and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but um, uh, you're doing good things there. Um, just that really you haven't been able to get the rooms to where you want to get them to at this point in level of time. Uh, the engagement with the um, with the local Atlantic City, what kind of engagement are, do you have with the local? I know you're saying you, and it seemed like to me you're saying that you have special, special identities that you're dealing with. Have you dealt with the local, the mayor, the the uh, the uh, uh, organizations that are in the city? Yes, there. I, I don't know them all offhand, but. We do, most of the organizations we deal with are local. And there's a lot of different ways. I mean, there's, there's kind of the donation from the customers when they put the slot ticket in the little box. There's, there's payroll deductions for the employees. There's donations from the actual corporate you know, checkbook itself. There's a lot of different source of funds. And then there's the, the, community, um, the community groups that are supported by that are usually the local community ones. So, I mean, that's kind of how we do it in Detroit, too. We usually focus locally. We don't, there's definitely bigger organizations that we do things with, like the American Heart Association and things like that, but typically we focus on local, especially if the local community, you know, could use the help. And your employee status is where? My employee status? No, not you. The, oh. uh, the casino itself, the employment status. Oh, yeah. Uh, in terms of numbers, a yes. couple thousand employees, it swells up in the... In the summer months, obviously, for to, to meet the demand of the peak season, and then tapers off a little bit. And you're projecting us to go where, from here, up. from this day forward. I'm projecting us to go <laughs> up. That's, that's my, I think we're just going to keep improving. I think we keep improving the facility. Um, you, we keep, you know, we try to make some money and then reinvest what we need to in the areas that we need to, whether it's food and beverage you know, hotel room, facility, like getting things, uh, you know, systems up to date. Like there's, there's a lot of capital that keeps a place like that operational. And you, we just got to keep doing it. 
and I think it'll just speak for itself and then people, it'll keep, you know, the momentum there right now is pretty, um, very, very positive and we just got to keep building on that. Yes, because summertime we're doing great. It's the, um, we had a pretty good overall year, actually. I mean, the summertime for sure is peak, but I was very impressed with the numbers in, you know, off peak season. It's, I mean, it's definitely, there's a big dif difference between July and the, the non July months, but right. I think there's year round business there, especially with entertainment, food and beverage. It's, it's still a great place to go in December. If you live in New York, you know, it's, it's quick, it's easy to get to. You can kind of just be there for a couple of days. I, I don't think this is a, a one season market. And it would help with the Detroit VIP coming in during that particular time. Yeah, we're not. We're the the <laughs> VIP trip was specifically not in July, the big VIP trip because this place is plenty busy in July, and our customers would be fine with coming in November, December, and that's when we're going to do it. So, I totally agree. Great, thank you. I have a few questions. Um, Sir, when, when you say you have a marketing message, what, what is that message? Well, right now it's go to ocean, go for the win. That's kind of the tagline. Um, what I thought versus a couple of years ago, and this is just kind of keeping a little broad, it's hard for me to stay broad with marketing, but it was a little too playful, and now it's more, I don't want to say elegant, but it's closer to that. And I think Kelly's done an awesome job with morphing it to that message. So like, that's kind of it. It's like, what's the brand feel? Like, what are, what are people expecting from, a, from like, you know, is it glamorous? Is it, is it a good value? So I, I think like where the brand shifted is really kind of the secret to the success is that kind of thing. Um, when you were here in the past, you said you would grow the market. Um, did you grow the market? Market's growing by my watch, right? I, I mean, Your I market has grown, but was that taking from other business, other properties or I mean I think yes and no I think it's in terms of in terms of new member or new new gamblers you know new customers new hotel stayers or concert goers like yeah I think there, I mean we're so close to Philadelphia New York and these gigantic markets that there's there's always potential to attract new people um, so yes yeah, so the, the hope is that that's primarily where it comes from because you want we want to see it, all of Atlantic City do well and then we're all pretty competitive, so we obviously want to take where we can. You know, that's, I think that's kind of the honest answer. I think we, we obviously want to capture market share. If it all came from the auto markets, that's fine, but we still want to you know, increase our market share. Uh, do you envision down the road um, having charters to bring in your Detroit high rollers? Is that your plan? I don't envision that. No. It's not, that's not like a great experience. I think, it's, I think that was actually one of the... Um, challenges is getting them here so if it's one or two folks i you know i'll fly them into philly and and shuttle but we'll, we'll probably charter a plane at the end of the year to the atlantic city airport to I mean to be honest um because then i can bring a group and it's a little bit more controlled i mean our vip customers were very careful with like the experiences we we deploy for them it has to be very comfortable so i think a charter bus from detroit i, I drove with bruce um during one of our trips, uh, he got to hear a lot of my stories, and um, uh, that that on a charter bus would not be pleasant. For, for <laughs> he had a good time, I promise. <laughs> but the VIPs would probably that that. Well, you're be. saying you're not going to do uh, buses from Detroit <laughs> yeah, here? Okay. Correct. I, yeah, correct. Yeah, we've we've been there. Um, in regards to employment, um, how big a challenge is it for you to fill your positions that you have open now? It's challenging. It's definitely challenging, um, and that's everywhere. And it's not even just our industry. It's not just restaurants. It's everywhere. I don't. You guys, I'm sure, have seen all the stories. It's difficult. So what can you do? Um, if wages are set by a union contract, you don't really. Those don't get changed too much, right? You can't really mess with those. You can have a culture. You can have good culture. Your benefits can be good. I think, like I was talking about earlier, if people are happy to come to work. I mean, there's just a buzz where people are like, "Oh, I work at Ocean now." And so if you create that culture, I think you have a little bit of an advantage for sure. Um, but I think also, like, we just need to come up with creative solutions to the extent that we can or weather the storm to the extent that we can. But is I mean, we're having the same challenges in Detroit. It's, you know, it's not unique to any one market. 
Were there any best practices that you brought from Detroit here? That I think the best practice part, it's, it's not really that granular. I think when we sit down with the high level team, when we sit down with Bill and Kelly and we sit down and talk about what's next and how do we approach X, Y, or Z, the thing is like there are things that work here that don't work in Detroit and vice versa. So we, we just, we don't like going into a market and this is really our first expansion, but we kind of knew going in, we weren't going to come here and necessarily say, this is how we do it there, let's do it here. So it's really more about strategy and, you know, you, yeah, like the strategy is, okay, who do you attract right now as a customer, whether it's based on worth or location or whatever, there's a million different versions of that. And you say, who do we want to attract and who do we need to be and who are we? And I think like when we sit down and discuss those things and we talk a year out or three years out, I think we're a good sounding board for them, I hope to be. And then really, the, I think the biggest thing we bring to the team is we try to get decisions made quickly, which, you know, the big guys typically can't do that. It's, it's harder with a gigantic corporate umbrella telling you this is how you're supposed to do things because it's how we do it in Phoenix. Like, it just doesn't work. So I think it's more about strategy, getting things done quickly, and making sure everyone's aligned in terms of, you know, what that is. And then just to go back, so you come monthly? Is that is Yeah, that roughly. Schedule? That's what we're averaging, yeah. And I know with technology, you, you can be in contact. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're, we're, uh, we're working on Ocean, so to speak, daily. I mean, that's a, that's a fair statement, whether we're on meetings or doing emails or whatever. But uh, we visit roughly every month. Um, what funding sources would be available if Ocean fell short on cash needs at the, at the property? That's a bigger question. <laughs> that's a tough one to answer in terms of, you know, would would that roll all the way up to ownership? It's, that's not something I could answer. Um, I can say that, at the, you know, Bruce went through the numbers, but call it, we'll have $185 million in debt by the end of the year when we draw down on everything, let's say, and we pay off all the, you know, all the other ancillary debt. And if we do 90 million, which is conservative, we'll be two times levered, it's called. That's probably the best, uh, probably, I'm not officially saying this, but that's probably the best debt level in the city. It's actually probably the best level in our industry. Two um, times leverage is nothing. Chairman, may I add to that? Um, in the projections now, there, there is a lot of room. There's, a, there's, there's cash and there's also projected equity distributions. There's a, there's a lot of room for play. I mean, not that we think this will happen, but there, there's, there's a very nice cushion before we would even have to get to, you know, going to ownership. And obviously ownership is well-funded and has no history of not stepping up to the plate. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, that's all I had. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Dahl? I, I failed to... Actually, my questions were fairly similar, which I was going to ask of Mr. Dahl, but I believe Mr. Policiccio answered, answered everything for me. Mr. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Um, do we need a break for us? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. If, um, if the council has any questions based on the commissioner's questions, then I would recommend that those be asked now, and then I would, with your permission, perhaps a 15-minute break. Um, and then come back for closing, and then another break after closing. Thank you. Thank you. No, no other questions. Okay. Well, then we will we will take a ten minute break, beginning now. Okay. Okay. Is that enough time, Council? To
LLC and its associated entities and individuals. The division also has conducted a financial analysis of Ocean, including a review of the transaction which resulted in OCR Investment LLC's acquisition of a 50% indirect interest that through the ICA trust it holds today in AC Ocean. Based on the division's report and the testimony that you have heard today, the division submits that OCR Investment LLC has met its burden of proof in demonstrating that it meets the statutory criteria for qualification as a holding company of casino licensee AC Ocean Walk LLC and that its affiliates have met the standards for qualification as additional holding companies. Based on separately filed reports, the division further submits that the natural person qualifiers of OCR Investment LLC have demonstrated that they meet the criteria for individual qualification under the Act. The division notes that by the provisions of the ICA Trust, the trust is to terminate automatically upon a grant of qualification. Nevertheless, if you deem it necessary as part of your determinations in this matter, the division consents to such dissolution of the trust and the discharge of William Murtha as trustee upon a favorable qualification ruling by this commission. In closing, I would note that the division has been provided with, um, well, I'll, I'll comment upon that later. Um, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kaufman? Uh, yes. Good afternoon now. Um, I would like to start my closing by saying that I really want to emphasize the tremendous turnaround of this property in the past few years and the work of Luxor and the Ocean executive team, now with the addition of OCR Investment, Illich Family Backed, and Bruce and John at OCRM. Um, also, I found out a little more information on the rooms when we took a break. The, room, the remaining rooms actually are done and they're awaiting FF&E and, &E, and that's, that's the supply chain issue right now. Um, I personally think it's a miracle with everything that's happening in the world and the supply chain problems all over and the, the items that we are ordering are not ordinary items and they're coming from places all over the world. I really do think it's you know, a miracle, but a miracles only happen with, again, hard work of everyone, that as many rooms did get open and are open now. Um, so I wanted to correct the record on that. Um, Bruce and John and OCR have been immersed in ocean since the closing, and as indicated by my questions, they are looking at everything and there, there is, they have a lot to offer and they want to make sure that, you know, they're not just throwing out ideas, but everything is done carefully and, you know, intently. And, you know, on that note, saying something from the entertainment industry, you know, I personally feel the best is yet to come and we, we are going to be seeing that. Um, as for the legal part of this, <laughs> we know that in order to get plenarily qualified as a holding company, we had to prove by clear and convincing evidence that we met the standards for qualification under the Casino Control Act. Um, I'm not going to go through each of them one by one again, but I submit that through the testimony and all of our submissions that we have indeed done that. Um, I wanted to also emphasize the business experience of Bruce and John and then of certainly the Illich family and you heard about some of their holdings today. Um, I wanted to thank the division, particularly Sarah Ben David and everyone here, I mean Mary Jo, Flaherty and Tr Tracy Richardson and Chris Glom that's left and obviously the director um, and the commission, particularly Diana, and of course the commissioners for holding this meeting today. Um, John mentioned that it seemed that this process was going on for a long time, and the reason that he thinks the process was going on for a long time is because we started interacting with the regulators well before we submitted our ICA application, and it is only 
I believe when the industry and the regulators work together that a casino can have the type of success that we are now seeing with Ocean. So I respectfully request that you grant plenary qualification. And as Sarah said, um, I do understand that the ICA trust um, dissolves by operation of law. So that relief, um, does, I don't believe, needs to be granted. But thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, are there any additional questions for council? Council, are there any other matters that we need to be brought to our attention now? Uh, I would just ask, Mr. Chairman, that um, the division be given the opportunity to comment on uh, the draft resolution and offer any edits. If, we could, if I could reserve that right for the division. Thank you. Fair enough. Um, with that being said, we're going to take a 15-minute um, recess to deliberate. So we will be back at, at 1245. Thank you. Thank you.
discussion. I understand there are a few amendments in regards to the draft resolution. Do the parties consent to that adoption? I believe that uh, the, the division just wanted to put on the record that it's still reviewing and they have some edits. That's correct. Thank you, Ms. Fontlory. Thank you. Are there any other matters come to our attention? Uh, no. On October 14th, 2021, we granted interim casino authorization, referred to as ICA, to OCR Investment LLC, allowing it to make a $175 million investment in and thereby acquire a significant ownership in AC Ocean Walk LLC, known as Ocean Casino and Resort. Pursuant to the Casino Control Act, we are required to hold a hearing and render a decision on the qualification of the OCR within nine months after the ICA is granted. Unless that time is extended by the Commission, as it was on July 7, 2022 meeting, we extended the ICA to facilitate considering this matter at today's special meeting. We must now determine whether the OCR and related entities and individuals have established by clear and convincing evidence that they meet the essential criteria for qualification as a holding company of a casino licensee, and that being financial stability, integrity, and responsibility, good character, honesty, and integrity, and sufficient business ability and casino experience to establish the likelihood of maintaining a successful and efficient casino operation. When we granted ICA to OCR, it was contemplated that the OCR's investment <clears throat> would be made in two phases, an initial investment of $110 million during phase one, followed by an additional investment of $64 million during phase two. 30 million of the initial investment was slated to complete 164 hotel room expansions. The additional amount would be primarily used to repay a Luxor capital loan and, re and increase Ocean's cash on hand. However, if we, as we have heard from witnesses, OCR decided to eliminate the second phase investment approach and instead invested the entire 175 million upon the initial closing of the transaction in late November last year. At the same time, Ocean and its affiliate, AR LLC, entered into a revised loan agreement with J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. The revised loan provided Ocean $185 million in borrowing capacity. Of that amount, AC Ocean borrowed a little over $40 million to support the hotel expansion project. As noted by the witnesses, additional borrowing is anticipated to support the hotel room expansion. OCR's investment and the J.P. Morgan refinancing <coughs> also enabled AC Ocean to repay existing loan obligations, resulting in a significant decrease in its long-term debt obligations. In addition to the hotel expansion project, Ocean recently completed a redesign of the casino floor and opened a new restaurant and retail sports book venue, all using available cash generated from operations. With the ongoing support of Luxor and now OCR, Ocean is thriving as, and is proving itself a strong competitor in both the Atlantic City and the regional gaming markets. Its revenue results remain encouraging with strong signs of post-pandemic recovery. As the division noted, the ongoing improvements of the Ocean's financial position, supported by the elimination of most of its remaining financial conditions imposed by the Commission on Ocean at the time of its initial licensure in 2018. OCR represented during the ICA hearing that it was committed to Ocean and to Atlantic City. Its willingness to invest in Ocean, to increase its hotel room inventory, reconfigure its gaming floor, erect the state-of-the-art sportsbook venue, and refresh its non-gaming offerings proves its commitment. As Atlantic City begins to re-emerge re post-pandemic, a significant part of, the, of its future will be the ability of its casino properties to grow their customer base, 
and thereby bring visitors and new customers to this market. Towards that end, capital improvement projects are critical to maintain the quality and enhance customer appeal. OCR is on the right track. We expect it to, to continue to positively contribute to Ocean's financial recovery and resurgence. The Illich family, through its vast holdings, represent, representing lead brands in food, sports, and entertainment industries, including Little Caesars, the Detroit Red Wings, the Detroit Tigers, Olympia Development, and of course, Motor City Casino Hotel in Detroit, Michigan. Their companies employ tens of thousands of people across the world and have shown a deep commitment to the communities in which they operate. Through its network of brands, the Elk companies have the capacity to create synergies between the Atlantic City operation and other operations. During the IC hearing, the witnesses noted that the, immediately upon public announcement of its investment in Ocean, they began to receive requests from existing customers. A tremendous opportunity exists to create an atmosphere of excitement, energy, and community engagement. And I, in one, look forward to seeing the future benefits to Atlantic City and the, and the state of New Jersey. Today, we must decide whether OCR has met its burden to demonstrate to the Commission by clear and convincing evidence that it meets each qualification standard set forth in the Casino Control Act as a new holding company of a casino license. Has OCR established its financial stability, integrity, and responsibility, as well as good character, honesty, integrity, and sufficient business ability and casino exper experience to establish the likelihood of maintaining a successful and efficient casino operation? The division reported to us that the results of a plenary investigation into qualifications of the OCR investment and its qualifying entities, and by separate reports, its individual qualifiers and casino key qualifiers. Based upon the division's reports and considering the entire record of this proceeding, including the testimony of today's witnesses, I, for one, are satisfied that the OCR has met its burden of establishing by clear and convincing evidence that it meets the criteria for plenary qualification as a holding company of a casino license. I want to thank Mr. Murtal for his service as the ICA trustee for OCR. We appreciate his service during the ICA period. With that being said, I will entertain a motion on this matter. Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion. I Is move to adopt the draft resolution and A, find OCR Investment LLC plenarily qualified as the new holding company of casino licensee AC Ocean Walk LLC, and B, find its designated entity and natural person qualifiers to be qualified, and C, issue initial casino key employee licenses to the following officers pursuant to NJSA 5-12-89 and find them plenarily qualified to serve in their respective positions for OCR Investments, LLC, and OCRM, LLC. And those individuals are Bruce Dahl as President and John Policiccio, Vice President, Secretary, and Treasurer, in accordance with the findings and rulings set forth therein. Is there a second? Mr. Chairman, I second the motion. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just say something. Mr. Cooper. Thank you. Um, I would just like to add that it's very hard to believe that Ocean, the original Revel, is already 10 years old. I'm just sitting here and thinking, wow, hard to believe. But with that, it's still the most recent addition to the casino industry in Atlantic City. It's certainly been an interesting 10 years. A lot of words can be used to describe the past decade. It's been very fragile, uncertain. It's weathered a lot of financial ups and downs, a wide variety of owners, potential owners, financial investors, just to highlight the recent years. But sitting here today and listening to all of the testimony it's very apparent that this property is doing well. 
It has shown its stability and integrity and has met the appropriate criteria and definitely has exciting plans for the future. I personally am very pleased and confident with what I've heard today. I'm always happy when I hear positive and exciting plans for the gaming industry here in Atlantic City. And there's no doubt in my mind that what has been presented here today is definitely positive, exciting, and most impressive. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Mollett? Yes. Vice Chair Cooper? Yes. And Chairman Closes? Yes. In accordance with resolution 2012093, the next closed session shall be held on Wednesday, August 10, 2022, at 9.30 a.m. in the Commission. Do we have any public comment? We do have one, Mr. Chairman. It is from, it is from Mark Clayton. Have you considered completing the second tower? If not, why not? The thinking seems to be the more rooms built, the more money made. How much would the second tower cost to build? That, that question can be recorded for the record and forwarded on to uh, Ms. Kaufman or her client. Thank you. No other further comment? No, Mr. Chairman. With that, I will make a motion to adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second? I will second that, Mr. Chairman. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Meeting is now adjourned. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.